Etag Pinikpikan Howdy everybody, welcome back to FDG Stages. Kumusta kayo ka kailians? Kumusta man din panagis buyo? Today we're going to talk about the top 2 igorot dish. Oh, slang ang mabisbisi na ko na na. Igorot people are simple and practical. Since the time of our ancestors, we've been using simple yet complex ways of life in agriculture, social structures, clothing, and food. Centuries until now, the spirit of simplicity still flows in the Igorot blood. Remember that the Cordillera was never subjugated by Spain, and so many parts of our culture and tradition are still alive until today. When we're talking about Igorot food, do not expect some extravagant semblance and secondary byproducts on them. Here are the two most unique Igorot dish. Utag is a preserved pork meat that is originally practiced and eaten. You may have heard and even confused with the words kiniing, kinudai, and even pinchang. I also believe that there are more local terms being used depending on which province in the Cordillera and even some other provinces from other regions where there is a huge number of Igorot, Gadang, and Bukalot population such as Nueva Vizcaya. The term Utag, kiniing, Kinudai actually mean the same in general sense. They are all pork meat that are preserved, but the differences lie on the way on how they get preserved. First of all, the word itag, or some pronounce it as itag, leans more on coming from the Bontok, Kankanae, and even Kalinga and Apayao languages and the same term for the Aplai, Maeng, and Bago dialects. Kiniing comes from the Kankanae term while Kinudai is Iboloy. Pindang or Pinchang is another Iboloy term from Bukod Benguet. Intapa and Hineloyhoy for Kalanguya and Sinapan is a term used in Apayao to pertain to the same food or practice. So how similar are all these terms and are there any difference between them? These terms similarly pertain to pork meat preserved with salt. Rock salt originally. In Apayao, they used to have wild boar meat to preserve as well. The most common practice is sun drying. After being dried from any liquid and applied with rock salt thoroughly, the meat is left to dry under the sun on the roof of the house or hang somewhere else outside for a minimum of 7 days or more. The more days it stays under the sun means the stronger the taste it will offer. A yellowish, goldish, and reddish fine piece of naturally preserved meat. This is formerly the tag is being known for. It's equivalent to kinodai in Ibaloy and hinaloyhoy in Kalanguya. Kiniing, however, is the kankanae apply maeng or bago term known to be preserved through smoke rather than through the heat of the sun. They call it sinapan in isnag while in kalanguya is intapa. In other Ibaloy terms, they call it pindang or pinchang. It is from the fire or smoke that we see this meat turn black. For this process, there are two or three ways. One is the meat is laid beside the fire or burning coal. Another is putting or hanging the salted meat above the fireplace. These two processes I have just said are not smoked or heated all the times as they stay idle for some time like the night time when the family have to sleep and put off the fire in the fireplace. They resume to get smoke in the morning when the family has to cook their breakfast. The third process is deliberately smoked as some folks purposely built fire structures just for the meat like a zinc metal shape into a cone to create a single direction for the smoke coming from the fire that was set up beneath. This is the most black of all the preserved meat. Currently, this process is being used for mass production for kiniing in the market. These are the similarities and differences of this old valued Igorot tradition. We can also say that the taste of the two processes are different but not totally far. The sun-dried tastes strong, sun-scented obviously, while the smoked is obviously smoky and raw tasting. I may have told you the terms used from the different sides of the region and out for this meat preservation like a bontok, an isnag, a kalinga, or a kankanae, call it a tag or itag, while kinudai for an iboloy. But these days, 
These words are no longer exclusive terms. We often hear an Iboloy use the terms Epag and a Kankanae using the term Kinudai. They became regional terms that when you mention Etag in any region in the Cordillera and even in Nueva Vizcaya and Quirino, they know it. The only difference, I think, is the process of sun drying and smoking. And wait, before we go to the second igorot dish, some people ask, where can I find those Etag with maggots? <laughs> Alright, people may have seen this attack with maggots on TV or documentaries or vlogs on YouTube and even I watch many of them. But I tell you, they are not answering or explaining the most important part of the culture. They're only presenting the strangest and the exotic part of it in order to gain views. Ladies and gentlemen, growing maggots in attacks is not a part of the century-old meat preservation process of etag. Let's be clear. Look, I know you ask, what about the ones that are being practiced in some parts of Mountain Province? Yes, some folks, some parts, some people let their meat grow maggots in them and that is their practice. But the general practice of etag and kiniing is so clear. It is simply salted, sun-dried, or smoked. You see, the main idea here is preservation. You gotta let the meat stand for at least a bit of time. You preserve the meat because when you let maggots grow in them, it's no longer preservation. It is decomposing and yet the process is brave and very unique as it offers another exotic experience and there's no harm in them, right? Pinikpikan is a chicken dish initially beaten shortly and scorched then boiled in a pot. It has a natural and smoky taste. The cooking of pinikpikan varies in every household. The variation is very close though, so we can say that every pinikpikan is similar. The main ingredient of the dish is salt, the only condiment that the traditional igorot use. That's how simple we are. We lean more on the natural taste of things rather than engulfing it with thousands of condiments and eventually losing the natural taste of the raw side of the food. Some households put spices such as ginger, garlic, or onions. Some cook it along with certain vegetables. The premier additive is chayote or merliton squash or what we call sayote. Green papayas can also be used. Other vegetables that people use are cabbages and Chinese cabbages such as napa cabbages or what we call wombok or another type which is bok choy or what we call pechai. Some variations also use potatoes for a loosely gooey soup. The most exciting, maybe, is the fusion of the two top igorot dish, pinikpikan plus etag, or the smoke one, kiniing, or intapa. When etag is added into the pinikpikan, the etag gives a stronger, tastier, and smokier effect. It is likely eating your two most favorite food at once. Many igorots, especially from the mountain province, most likely cook pinikpikan this way. Other igorots from the other provinces like Ifugao, Kalinga, and Benguet most likely want their pinikpikan to be pure. It may have been that way, but 2021, 2022 is a modern time. Cultures have adapted and traditions may have been tampered by another foreign tradition. Each igorot household is different in its way of preparing food. Some families may have been staying traditional until this time. Some may have adapted into foreign cultures and integrated it into their own, forming new standards like pinikpikan becomes adobo in the way of cooking or some sort like that. Yet the most controversial one is when the centuries-old pinikpikan traditions is being held up into the spotlight. You see, I described pinikpikan as a chicken dish initially beaten shortly and scorched then boiled in a pot. It may sound simple when you focus on the product, but many outsiders or animal activists or could be anyone turn their focus into the beaten word. Yes, we beat the chicken while it's alive. Pinik pecan comes from the word pick pick, which means beat repeatedly. So obviously we beat the chicken repeatedly under its wings and on its neck to make its blood clot 
which will soon create the unique taste that Pinikpikan offers alongside with being smoky. But despite being mentioned as beaten shortly, outsiders cry for animal abuse and cruelty. From centuries ago, the dish was first cooked to appease spirits. It also served as a ritual for many Igorot communities facing difficult decisions. Most often than not, the ritual is a dawes or meaning cleansing. During the ritual, spirits of the ancestors are invoked to help grant what was being asked for. While time advances, the belief has already been devalued by foreign influences, especially religion. All we can see now is how the culture has evolved into a tradition, into an art of cooking, or some sort like that. Some folks may cling into the old rituals, but quite frankly, it has become a cooking style. The Igorots like how it tastes because the dish is a standing culture that stood the test of time. Despite of this approval from outsiders, the Cordillerans are still keeping the tradition, the culture, in a country where westernization is making every town look like a photocopy of another town, the Igorots are still trying to survive and keep their identity. The Igorots are one of the few tribal groups who are still carrying pure bloodline, culture, traditions, and identity unlike other lost Filipino tribes that became a mere copy of the colonialist Spain. I also would like to say that I understand where it's coming from. The outsiders love animals. It hurts them to see an animal being beaten like a torture before dying. For me, Pinikpikan symbolizes my battle for balance between my culture, which I'm very proud of, and my love for animals. Because causing suffering isn't just right. The least we can do for an animal that we kill is to kill it quickly and as humanely as possible. On the other hand, we should not also just ignore culture. The Philippines have already lost so much to the ravages of colonization, westernization, and modernization. And in this modern world, we have a lot of things to say about being respectful to cultures, being against ethnocentrism, and accepting all the beliefs around the world. Pinikpikan was and is done never out of pleasure. It was sacred, now a culture, a real Philippine original culture. Is this animal cruelty? Or does it just feel cruel when we see it being done? Is it better when it's being done away behind the massive farms and factories doors?
Is it better when it's concealed like the guilt of what eating meat really means? This chicken will be eaten every single piece. Nothing will be wasted. I want to make a shout out and thank you to Joyce Andy Nangwatan of Nueva Vizcaya, to Lawrence Passion, aka Vagabond Igorot of Apayao in Kalinga, to Giovanni Bastian of Apayao and Abra for the information they provided me for this video. Peace to every one of you, Kakailian. Salah salamat. Have a next fruitful year. Happy New Year. Have a good one. Cheers. <music>